Let's go over number 1304, find n unique integers sum up to 0. The problem says, given an integer n, so we're given a number, return any array containing n unique integers such that they add up to 0. So this problem is relatively straightforward. So we're given a, a number n, which is going to be an integer, so whole number. And what we want to do is we want to return an array containing n number of unique integers and they have to add up to zero. So if you look at example one, we have n is equal to five and the output is n unique integers, meaning we're gonna have five numbers and all these numbers are gonna be unique. And also, if you add all these up, it's gonna sum to zero. So we have, uh, is it negative seven? Yeah, negative seven, negative one, one, three, and four. So we have one two three four five numbers and do they add up to zero so we have negative seven and three and four sums up to seven so that's zero negative one and one that's zero so they all add up to zero so we want to do that for our problem and let's get to it if you guys find this helpful make sure you guys like and subscribe thanks Okay, now let's code our solution. First thing we do is declare a function sum0 which takes in an integer n. Now what I do is I make a variable called result and this is going to be an array and this is where we're going, we're going to store our n unique numbers and we'll return that later. Return result. Okay, looks good. So just to explain a little bit of logic, um, what I do is, so let's look at example 4. So our number or our integer is 4, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in 4 and negative 4 and that gives unique pairs, right? And then as we loop through our um, function, I'm going to push in 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to decrement each time. So we'll make a for loop and let i is equal to 0 and i is going to be less than math dot 4 and divided by 2 and increment by one each time and what i do is result result dot push n minus i and negative n plus i so if you look now we have our somewhat unfinished solution we have 4 and negative 4, which I said, uh, I'm going to push in 4 and the negative of that number, right? Because remember, we always want unique numbers. And as we loop through our function, I'm going to uh, put one that's smaller in a sense. 3 and negative 3. So you guys see the pattern, right? But we're not actually done here yet. So this handles only the even case, right? So 4 works, 4 is a good solution, and obviously everything else is wrong except 0, which is like the edge case, okay? So now we have to handle our um, odd case. So what I do is I'll make a few if statements. So if our number is odd, if n mod 2 does not equal 0, I'm going to push result dot push 0. I'm just going to, oh, okay, not O, 0. So if the number is odd, I'm just going to push in 0. So if you see, so 4, 5, 3, and 1, you can see that it added 0 to the array. So that handles our odd case, right? So I'll make a note. If odd, add 0. Okay. So it looks good. Okay, so that's our solution. Um, so this kind of handles our even case. And the if statements above uh, handles our odd case. If it's odd, we're going to add 0 and then add these two pair of numbers as we loop through um, our for loop. And i is less than math dot 4 um, and divided by 2 because remember, we're adding two numbers here. That's why we want to have the uh, loop. If we didn't do that, uh, let's see. If we just did n, we would have, oh, if we had n, we have a whole bunch of numbers. So this looped uh, n number of times, and we don't want that. So what we do is we do math.4 
and divided by 2 and there you go that's our solution number one now let's go over our code just to get a better understanding so we make our result variable to store our unique numbers and what we do what we're gonna do is we're gonna return that later and first thing we do first thing we do is check if our n our number is odd and if it is odd we're going to push in the number zero so if our n was equal to 1, we're going to start with 0. If our number was 3, we're going to have 0 inside our array. If it's 2, we're just going to start off with an empty array because this is going to be false. And we hit our for loop, we start at index i, and we do um, i is less than meta for n over 2 because we're adding in two numbers over here. And we increment by 1. So each time in our loop we're pushing in two numbers and let's say that our number was um, 3 we're going to push in n minus i and negative n plus i so in the first iteration i is going to be equal to 0 right so 3 minus 0 negative 3 plus 0 and this is going to be 3 and negative 3 and this is the pretty much the pattern um, as we loop through um, if it was some other number, uh, it would be like, I don't know, let's just use 5. Because for this one, the iteration is done because we're going to have 3, negative 3, and 0. So 0, 3, and negative 3, that's 3 numbers. So we have 3 unique numbers that sum to 0. So this is 0, and obviously uh, 0 is 0. So this is 0, okay. So what if our n was 5? In the first iteration, it's going to be... Uh, 5 minus 0 and negative 5 plus 0 which is going to be negative 5 and 5 so this is i equal to 0 and when i is equal to 1 uh, we're going to decrement this by 1 and obviously here we're going to increase by 1 so it would be 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 and negative 4 plus oops not negative 4 negative 5 plus 1 is going to be negative 4 so we push in these two numbers these two negative numbers and then a 0 so we're going to have 0, 5, 4, negative 5, and negative 4. So obviously these cancel out, these cancel out, and 0 is 0, and now we have 0. And the, all these numbers are unique. Now let's go over our code just to get a better understanding. So we make our result variable to store our unique numbers. And what, we do, what we're going to do is we're going to return that later. And first thing we do, first thing we do is check if our n, our number, is odd. And if it is odd, we're going to push in the number 0. So if our n was equal to 1, we're going to start with 0. If our number was 3, we're going to have 0 inside our array. If it's 2, we're just going to start off with an empty array because this is going to be false. And we hit our for loop, we start at index i, and we do um, i is less than meta for n over 2 because we're adding in two numbers over here and we increment by 1. So each time in our loop, we're pushing in two numbers and let's say that our number was um, 3, we're going to push in n minus i and negative n plus i. So in the first iteration, i is going to be equal to 0, right? So 3 minus 0, negative 3 plus 0 and this is going to be 3 and negative 3. And this is the, pretty much the pattern um, as we loop through um, if it was some other number, uh, it would be like, I don't know, let's just use 5. Because for this one, the iteration is done because we're going to have 3, negative 3, and 0. So 0, 3, and negative 3, that's 3 numbers. So we have 3 unique numbers that sum to 0. So this is 0, and obviously uh, 0 is 0. So this is 0, okay. So what if our n was 5? In the first iteration, it's going to be... Uh, 5 minus 0 and negative 5 plus 0 which is going to be negative 5 and 5 so this is i equal to 0 and when i is equal to 1 uh, we're going to decrement this by 1 and obviously here we're going to increase by 1 so it would be 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 and negative 4 plus oops not negative 4 negative 5 plus 1 is going to be negative 4 so we push in these two numbers these two negative numbers and then a 0 so we're going to have 0, 5, 4, negative 5, and negative 4. So obviously these cancel out, these cancel out, and 0 is 0, and now we have 0. And the, all these numbers are unique.